Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here, and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll for the Nintendo DS. But before we get into that particular introduction, by the way, if you managed to leave on the actual main menu screen for quite a long while for this point, um, you probably do realize is the fact that that particular perch right there almost attempts to go ahead and just go ahead and utilize sleep mode. Yeah, as you can see, where his eyes is almost going to be closing and it closing itself, but then eventually you're able to wake up. So it's one of the things of that Easter egg, by the way. So anyway, last time we have managed to able to win through World Seven, World Eight. And especially noticeable for World 9. Well, for World 7, we did manage to win through Tempest Storm. World 8, we had a terrible time in World 8 in Meteorite Mayhem. And also, we did manage to have ourselves a pretty good time in Journey Forms of uh, World 9, Big Bang Boom. And today, this will be the grand finale of this game's Let's Play. And because of this though, we're about to be going go ahead and move on to the final three worlds. Now I say that is because, well, we'll explain more about this until whenever we're able to finish up with, uh... Well, first of all, is the fact that here we go with this first world for this video. That's what appears to be World 10, which is known as Zero G Station. From the looks of it, though, that stuff, though, it's basically, it's like a space station. Very similar to Space Colony from the likes of Super Monkey Ball 2 slash Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, if you want to count that. So... And yeah, believe it or not, this is where the game starts to get a little bit more difficult, and especially notable, it's ridiculously challenging at the same time. Because, uh, we'll point things out whenever we get on to the 8th level in this world, so... And as far as I'm guessing correctly, it's the fact that for that particular background music you're gonna be hearing for the sake of this world, uh, that will heavily borrowed back in Journey Forms of Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz in Ultra Heaven, possibly the hardest world in that game. Just because of this dreaded World 10-5, just because, ah, oh, it's incredibly luck-based. Like, I can never seem to be able to bypass this level on that. Well, I haven't exactly completed that whole entire game yet, just because of that stupid level. But regardless of everything else though, is the fact that, well, and it's bad enough they but they able to actually just manage to able to bring that stage back in the HD remaster or something. So yeah, that's kind of underwhelming for my liking. So and of course, as you can tell, this is the final time we're going to be able to select in Gong Gong for the sake of this game in particular. And also, as far as you've noticed already, ever since in the last video, that in Big Bang Boom World, basically, we actually select Baby for the final time. So, because of that though, the final two worlds we're going to be saving for is of course Mimi and Ai Ai at the same time. So... Anyways, here's the, uh, some sort of like a fun bonus level, because it almost inspires by Gravity Slider from the likes of Super Monkey Ball 2. Except the fact that there wasn't any goal post or anything like that, because instead we obviously need to collect bananas throughout the whole entire bonus stage. So even then, now that way it should able to actually boost up my life's counter, so in this case I've got about 11, or 12, if you want to count the forms of, like, let's just say if you have you know, zero lives in total. Although, unlike the ones in Super Monkey Ball Adventure, though, uh, basically, if your life's counter will go to zero, this means that you're obviously gonna have to be forced to use the continue, so... Yeah, that's how it goes, basically, in terms of archaic kind of stuff, basically, so... And this level might be very similar to you, because if you remember from the likes of Wall 3, which is, of course, Blistering Sands, this level is very similar to one of those levels in Wall 3, except the fact that it's more accurately a little bit harder compared to the forms of how it does it on the first time around. Although, strangely enough though, is the fact that I have no idea why they managed to able to cut down the size from that particular uh, levels like these, when you have to go through step to step. Um, I think it's pretty obvious because of the limitations of the handheld or something like that, so... <gasps> no way! Hell no! I was... Oh, stupid control sometimes. I just really prefer the analog stick over this directional pad. I don't know. So anyway, a few things I want to explain about this before we able to actually discuss upon 
uh, the actual final few things about this game. Uh, first of all is the fact that today's day, it is of course the 15th of October today, in this case in 2020. So naturally speaking tomorrow that the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit will be releasing for the Nintendo Switch tomorrow. So, should be exciting for most of any other Mario Kart fans out there. But I really don't know if I might still try to get it, but even then though, the problem is though is that it is way too expensive because it was actually 100 quid, even way more expensive than the actual Nintendo Switch copy, or in this case a physical game or something like that. But that's probably just me anyway, though. That's probably just me. Anyway, talking of which, actually, is the fact that I'm pretty sure that Mario and Luigi has already mentioned about the forms of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic 10th year anniversary already, ever since the journey forms of uh, the All Cup Tour. And as well as from that, they also mentioned about the fact that there's a lot of videos out there, which I will say, they look very good, especially noticeable how the fact that they put up with music videos, talk about retrospectives most of the time, in this case, in our case, mind you, so even then, no, that's all I could really doubt it for anyway. Alright, so we're almost there to this world. In fact, whenever I matched the first time I played this world, whenever I matched the first, first time I've got the game, um... Let's just say between World 8, World 9, and also World 10 give me a lot of trouble, just because, wow, there was that one level in World 10 most likely, it just gives me a lot of, uh, trouble sometimes, even especially noticeable, it just gives me an obnoxious headache every time whenever I manage to play that level. I mean, you see why whenever we get into this, whenever we're able to, well, let's just say if we try to complete level 7 right here, this level's not too difficult, even though sometimes it can be tricky just because there's gonna be a lot of, you know, weird curves in their slow slants or something, even that it's hard to explain about this sometimes. Oh my god, this level right here. This gives me nightmares as a kid. Well, for one noticeable thing, it's basically a sequel to, let's just say, Royalty uh, Wheel. I think that's what the level... Oh wait, Royalty Bypass, the level that's originally from in Tempest Storm. I mean, that's basically what this is. I mean, it's basically similar, except the fact that it makes things a little bit tough and difficult because of... I have a lot of problems with this stage. For one, although let's talk about the level itself. For whatever reason, it just calls it Revolution. And basically, uh, usually relatively speaking, is the fact that in this particular level, once again you have to go through those little rotating platforms every time. And what makes this even worse than the forms of how it does it in Royalty Bypass is the fact that well, in addition to able to actually have the same issue with the forms of that stupid camera is going pretty out of control here. And second of all is the fact that now we need to rely on those uh, rectangular platforms as you can see. And also, there might be uh, still far lacking in terms of the forms of guardrails and stuff like that. I know it's up for the challenge aside of that, which I don't mind it at all. But even then, no, because this is where the game starts to get a little bit tough and difficult. And also, once again, I should probably point things out right away, is the fact that the controls in this game is not that perfect. Because there are a few times that you weren't able to get yourself stiff movements, or the lack of a better term, the lack of camera control. Well, usually relatively speaking, because of how the fact that sometimes I always find myself just able to actually get... A lot of rage moments in this particular stage as a kid, which for the life of me, I can never seem to able to actually go for level 9 and level 10, unless if I was able to practice those on the practice mode. So because of that though, I did manage to practice this stage a lot as a kid, and for the life of me, I can never bypass it. So that honor goes to the same applies to uh, Exam C from Super Monkey Ball 1, and especially noticeable with... Uh, Let's say pendulums in Journey forms of Expert Extra level in Super Monkey Ball 2, because I seriously swear to god, that level can just kill myself. But anyway. Oh yeah, by the way, at the end of this particular stage, as you can see right there, uh, now we need to rely on that some sort of like a perfect timing syndrome. And what do I mean by that? Well, we need to let that rotate the rectangular platform to smash to able to touch this little blue bit right there. And if you time it well enough, then you would be able to drop down to the goal itself. So, yeah, I can never 
managed to able to stand this stage. I seriously hate this stage. <laughs> Let's move on and move on to the ninth stage, which is Sith Track. Which, from the actual standpoint, it's basically Twin Attacker, basically. If you ever managed to play through, uh... Oh, wow, do I have any no time to react at all? Jeez. Maybe I'm pretty much used to with Super Monkey Ball 1, or even Super Monkey Ball Deluxe variation of the stage, because usually that stage is actually based off from Twin Attacker, as I said earlier. But the biggest difference is now is the fact that, well, I swear to god, these little Twin Attackers just always throws me off for that really unpredictable pattern sometimes. But regardless of such though, we did manage to bypass that, or in this case, to pass for this, that particular stage, no problem, so, at least way bet way more easier than the forms of how it does it on that particular revolution stage, because the camera is like, really throwing me off. Anyways, the final stage in Wall 10, which appears to be pretty easy, but unfortunately, for those of you probably wondering, that our models will have ourselves a lot of deaths, because, uh, for one those oh, actually two things most likely. Uh, for one, controls the camera, and two, my game always attempts to lag, so I think that's probably due to that I'm still managed to play this on the emulator. And yes, I was expecting bit about the fact that originally I was going to able to play this on the actual DSi XL hardware, but unfortunately though, that's not much else to speak of, so... I just want to get this world done before we move on to the next world. In fact, relatively speaking, is the fact that, um, you know how the fact that in ever since in World 8, as well as World 9, that, uh, basically I did manage to found, uh, the only two secret goals in the whole entire game so far. What happens if you do manage to able to find the two red goals, most notably in Hollow Diamond, as well as, uh, Converse levels in the whole entire game, and basically, and also in addition to those, when you completed the 10 worlds so far, as you can see right there, we got ourselves a very random peculiar number uh, tally right there, which we'll point it out whenever we dive right into the next world, which again, it ought to be able to unlock the next world, which appears to be world 11, in this case, Studio 1, as you can see right there. Basically, as I said before, you need to revisit to Meteorite Mayhem to get the secret goal, as well as the Big Bang Boom, uh, one of the red goals, you were able to actually unlock Studio 1. In this case, World 11. And this one gets really, really tough. Especially noticeable how the fact that, although one thing I should probably point things out right away, I really love the actual aesthetics of this particular world. It always inspires by like channel surfing kind of stuff, but that's probably just me anyway, so. And as you can see on that particular bottom right corner on the top screen portion of the game, basically as you can see we got ourselves our number tally kind of stuff. And basically what that actually represents, well, unfortunately it does not activate it unless if you do manage to complete this wall first, which is a kind of a, this is kind of a shame really. But basically what the 2006 represents for is the fact that that's the banana counter that you have to collect. Although, quite frankly though, and thankfully though, you don't have to necessarily try to able to actually just to complete the entire world just to collect those bananas in between because it actually saves your progress, thankfully. But um, that's, that's how you able to actually expect of how the fact that you would be able to actually access to the 12th and the final world in the game, which we'll talk more about it whenever we're able to get on to other mentions about that particular world. So yeah, you get the idea for that point. Even though, unfortunately, I can't seem to able to add my bananas counter on that particular 2006 uh, type of bananas counter right there, just because, again, in order to able to let that happen is the fact that you need to complete this world first. And after we're done with that, well, you can have, you can able to actually revisit to previous worlds. And that way, you would be able to grab even more bananas throughout. And that way, you would be able to have the ability to able to play, well, the final main world of the game. So... I know it's a bit of a tedious thing to do, especially no support, I might as well do this off screen because even then though, because of that though, I just want to get this let's play finished before we move on to the next Super Monkey Ball game before uh, God knows if the next Monkey Ball game will be announced at some point soon. To be more specifically, I'm going to be doing Super Monkey Ball 3D, which is going to be the next one, so even then though, that might be some consumption. 
So yeah, you get the idea of how this goes. And obviously, as you can see on screen, I'm going to be playing as Mimi for the final time, as you can see right there. And of course, we'll save I.I. for last, because, you know, he's the main character of the entire series, so... But, you know, you probably get the idea of how this goes. Alright, so the next bonus stage, uh, it feels kind of strange. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's actually pretty strange. Basically, we have a combination of three balls, as you can see right there. And obviously, to get some bananas, is the fact that you have to get a lot of speed, and that way you would be able to collect even more bananas, and eventually grind for more extra lives later down the road. Even especially noticeable how the fact that if you fell down, well, there isn't any way to able to go back up. So even then, though, it kind of reminds me of those one particular level. Well, actually, it's very similar to the forms of how it does it in one of those bonus levels in, uh, let's just say, Zero G Station. That's, uh, you can't go back for it. So because of that, though, you always have to take a risk and just try to fall off and let the bonus finish. So... But again, you don't have to worry about the losing a life on those particular bonus levels because they're just there for the sake of, uh, you know, if you really want to gather more extra lives, then more power to you. But again, if you get, uh, if you get a game over, if you manage to run out of extra lives, you get kicked out. So there's no continues whatsoever. So, yeah, that might be, seems a logical side of things. So because of that, though, yeah, I just want to point it out. In fact, some, uh... Uh, comments did, or some of the YouTube comments did already point things out right away, so either way, though, that's all I can really say here, so. Alright, so. I think, quite frankly, though, is the fact that we are to the halfway point in this world already, even though, strangely enough, though, we didn't have that much deaths on it so far, which is quite good, considering how the fact that I will still say that this world might be pretty tough in some scenarios, well, nowhere near as hard as the forms of how it does it in, uh, World Day, as well as the, uh, World 10 was, because, you know, sometimes the camera just sometimes throw you off at one form or another, so... In fact, speaking of this world, actually, it's the fact that out of all the actual worlds in this game, this is by far one of my favorite worlds in this game, because I have no idea why. I think it's pretty obvious, because I really love the actual aesthetics about this world, because obviously it almost inspires by channel surfing, like you see all kinds of TV monitors in the background, which actually represents the actual studio ones or something like that. Even then, though, whenever I first saw this as a kid, and I was like, I have no idea how do I access to this world. But then I did some research, and it turns out that, yeah, you have to get these two uh, hidden goals in those two levels, basically. So, again, it's not much by the comparison when it comes to unlockable methods on that particular process. But, hey, uh, they said something. And also, you notice on the forms of the 7th level in this world, the red goal does not exist at all. And especially noticeable whenever we get onto the true final world in the game, that uh, we'll pointing out uh, whenever we get into this. So, oh god, this level can be pretty annoying, because you have to deal with the forms of a lot of, like, timing patterns or anything like that. And then if you do manage to time your uh, movements very, very well, then you would able to actually by bypass it or something, so... In fact, we're actually doing not that bad. It's just this last part we need to dodge. There we go. Whew. Even though I only just lost one life, so... Oh, well. No big deal. And here's the final level, which is Luca, uh, Locomotive, or Locomote. So, in this case, we have to get ourselves a good running start. And... Oh, no. I don't think I can make it. No, I don't think I can make it. Oh, boy. I think this is definitely one of the harder levels in this world, so, because you have to do a lot of emphasis on timing, so... As well as your momentum itself as well, so... Also, I really love the music, as I said earlier, so, because it almost inspires by... God knows what it is, so... Alright, let's see if I can do this again. Hopefully I would be able to get a good running start. I don't know if I can make it. Uh, do I? No, I didn't make it. Ah, oh, having so many bad luck scenarios like this. Or, if we could potentially try to get ourselves a little bit of luck around here, let's see if we can do it there. Oh, oh, dang it. Dang it, I was so close. Jeez, this level can get really, really get into my nerves sometimes. All right, let's see if we can do it for a fourth time. And, oh, no, 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 no. <gasps> 
Oh my gosh! I got saved by that particular rail. Oh, yes. Anyway, <laughs> that was unexpected. But anyway, world, level, world 11 is done. So I'm going to have to collect all 2006 bananas off screen, by the way. And because of this, though, I have to go for a lot of repeated run-throughs of World 2. What I highly recommend is to pick the actual easier worlds, and then that way you would be able to actually collect a whole bunch of bananas. And again, in order to be able to actually access to the final world in the game, you have to collect 2006 bananas. I'm not kidding. I know it's a bit of a waste of opportunity right there, and soon enough, if you do manage to able to accomplish that, you will able to actually unlock the true final world in the game, as you can see on that little new dot. That's what appears to be Mish Marsh. And what I've noticed something is the fact that this particular world is like a combination of, uh, let's just say, Big Boom Bash or something like that, and especially noticeable with, uh, let's just say, Zero G Station. Although, what I've noticed something is the fact that it almost reminds me of uh, the ninth world, except the fact that we're going to this little trivia uh, graphical kind of world or something like that. So, might be seems a little bit weird to some, but hey, uh, at least that's something is worth noting for. So, and I do apologize if you can hear the noise in the background because I believe Luigi is going to be able to deal with that particular. Uh, painting wall today, so because of that, though, I must admit that I do apologize for that. So, I'm pretty sure Luigi won't mind about that at all. So, even then, though, because Luigi is like a cool guy. So, anyway, so this is what um, this particular wall right there. Oh, I just realized is the fact that, by the way, there's something pretty cool. Go straight up, and boom, there you go. Self explanatory. You know, it's kind of weird about the fact that this level doesn't have a secret goal around here. I think it's pretty obvious because of how the fact that between um, World 11 and World 12 don't have the secret goals anywhere because as I said this before, there are only two secret goals uh, throughout the whole game. I know it seems a little bit weird, probably because of the limitations of the handheld or something like that. So it might be seems the case or something, so... And this is easily, without a doubt, the hardest world in the game. This is pretty obvious because of some level... Uh, some level choices goes like, well, some of them might be pretty easy and such, but most of the time it's actually really, really tough and difficult. Mainly with, uh, let's just say the first level in that world, you have to be get a lot of emphasis on these little pushing launchers, as you can tell. Very similar to the launchers level from the likes of Super Monkey Ball 2. And uh, basically you have to do that a lot. I think you have to do it like three times, so... And the second level is pretty obvious, it's actually based off from Super Monkey Ball 1 in Advanced Floor 6. And, oh no, I found that level pretty easy. And also sim similarly for level 3 and 4, I found that also kind of easy, but the only thing is incredibly difficult is the fact that, well, you have to get a lot of emphasis on the forms of some very careful movements or anything like that, so... Anyways, here we go folks, here's the final bonus stage in the whole entire game, which appears to be inspired by a uh, banana hunting level from the likes of Super Monkey Ball 2. What do I mean by that? Well, obviously it's the fact that we have to get a lot of emphasis on this little jump contraption. And, however though, unlike in any other bonus levels throughout the whole game, usually, relatively speaking, sometimes it only contains like 50 bananas maximum. This is the only bonus level to able to feature a whole lot of bananas, mainly with 96 bananas, which is quite a lot. Although I will have to admit though right away, there is no way I can able to complete that stage. This is pretty obvious because uh, getting all the bananas in this particular stage, as you can tell, is actually a lot trickier, and it's also kind of luck-based as well, because most of the time my hit detection doesn't seem to able to go closer to the banana, but either way though, we're just gonna have to leave it as it goes by, or even just let the time run out, or if I was gonna be able to be slightly curious, is that I might as well able to fall off, and just move on to the next stage, so... But then again, though, that was the final time we're going to be dealing with the bonus stage, as you can tell, as I said this before. Even though it's kind of strange about the fact that in Super Monkey Ball Adventure does not contain any bonus stages whatsoever, which I found was a little bit, well, pretty strict on that part. 
And now we move on to the second half of World 12, which, of course, the next level we're going to be hitting to is the Gauge, as you can see. Even though I will have to admit, though, this level is pretty tricky and difficult. Well, no one near as hard as the true final level, or in this case, the last level in this world, which uh, we'll point things out whenever we get into it. But what makes things a little bit tricky with this stage is that you always have to rely on, you know, just trying to able to keep on pressing left slightly most of the time until you get yourselves your momentum going in terms of this particular segment right there. So, if you manage to get the hang of this though, you should be dealing with this okay. So, oh my god, here's the giant comb 2.0. Oh, I'm just kidding. So yeah, basically, ladies and gentlemen, here's the sequel to the giant comb level from Super Monkey Ball 2. And this time around though, rather than just having two uh, stuff that you have to avoid. Instead, they are now more likely for stuff that we have to able to actually just dodge um, every now and then. So, and definitely a little bit trickier. So, because of that though, uh, because it's pretty obvious, because of my, uh, for one, obviously my game always lags every time, and two, because of the controls and momentum can sometimes feel a bit too weird for my taste. So, in fact, that was actually a close one right there, so... But again, there's not much else I can talk about for the sake of this point, guys, because of how the fact that, well, we're pretty much almost at the end of this game right now. So, but even then, I'm quite surprised about the fact that this particular process of this Let's Play goes pretty dang quick. Even though, no, most of the time, though, is the fact that, of course, I can't be bothered able to show you guys the, uh, my... You know, 2006 bananas grinding, as far as you guys should know, so... Oh, oh, this lag is going to be the death of me. That's not my fault, guys. It's literally it's just the lag's fault. Even though I would like to be able to get the advanced c computer for able to make this game run very, very well. But unfortunately, though, this is the only laptop I can only use to able to run some other Let's Plays in particular for certain emulators and stuff. Hey, do apologize for that point, folks, but anyway... Uh, come on, hopefully I should be able to make it at this point. Just want to get this level done. Alright, there we go. Whew. Seriously, that level is so hard compared to the forms of how it does it in Giant Comb from Super Monkey Ball 2, I swear. Anyways, let's move on to this 8th level, as you can see, which appears to be inspired by Walt 7 from Super Monkey Ball 2, from level 8, and that was the fact that we have to traverse through those different halls until you're able to make it towards the, at the very bottom. Not that part of a level, though. Unlike the other two levels that we might able to consider going into, that was the fact that, well, I'm sure most, uh, most players will already know what I'm going to say about this for the most part. So, either way, though, we'll just get into the goal right there. So, only two more levels to go, folks. So, let's see what this next level is going to be involved around with. Oh, this level is interesting. But it's also it's kind of hard at the same time. Just because, obviously, we need to go and dive right into those little tiny holes. And that way, that will give you some progression. However, the hardest thing about this stage for me, though, is the fact that the ending portion, as always, can go... Well, and also the middle section, too, because every now and then is the fact that the actual wheel itself just goes way too fast. And then if we manage to get extremely lucky right there... Oh, gosh, the final bit. No! No! No, 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 no! Ah! Oh. God, I hate that final part. It always comes, like, pretty random and lux at the same time, but either way, though, we'll, hopefully we're gonna try that again. I mean, seriously, I hate when that happened right there. It's basically, it's basically, it's like, well, you never know of where you exactly try to aim for the goal, but either way, though, hopefully we'll try this again for the third time in a row, or third time's a charm, and, um, hopefully we would be able to just i not able to do this carefully enough. 
And also, getting to those holes is kind of annoying because they always go to their max speed or something like that. Which, because of that though, you will attempt to miss the holes super easily. Like, even then, though, it almost just drag out a bit, so. Come on. Come on. Move to the left. Okay. Come on. Get into the hole. Thank you. Now let's get into the second segment, and... Uh, come on, I just want to get this world finished! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, I think I've almost ran out of time. Come on, get in there, thank you. Now to this last bit. Come on, get onto the blue line. There we go. Whew! Jeez Louise, man. That level can really just give my unlucky moment right there. Alright, so here we go folks, here's the final level in the whole entire game, and this will have to be one of the hardest, and it's also is one of the toughest ones at the same time as well. Because basically, all you have to do here is... <gasps> Bruh! Why does that little red stick out thing just knock me out? God dang it. Anyway... Uh, to be able to get up to the goal, as you can tell, is the fact that the goal itself is constantly moving. And the idea here is the fact that we need to use those little jump pads until you're able to actually launch higher up in the sky, and then basically, hopefully, God forbid, trying to able to aim for the actual goal spot. However, though, what makes things a little bit harder and difficult, especially noticeable because of how the fact that, well, Despite the fact that this is the only level that you can able to actually just to... Well, there wasn't any goal in the actual uh, ground, but rather on the above. However though, here's the thing though, is the fact that this will took me multiple tries in journey from this particular stage. Because otherwise though, then you probably instantly will not gonna make it for your jump height. And believe me, that about the fact that matter is though, for every first time play the game, it doesn't matter if it's on a DS physical game card, or if you manage to play it on the emulator, basically this will give you multiple tries until you're able to, well, bypass this particular stage. But, it was the final level, so I guess that makes sense for the forms of the hardest challenge, but either way though, good luck on that particular stage, because that way it just gives you a lot of time waster, as well as from that, a lot of emphasis on trial and error, so, but even then though, if you assume me if you get enough bounce height along when you're trying to jump onto the jump pad, then you would, assumingly, if you manage to hop onto the another jump pad and get enough bounce height, and you would able to actually land on that particular goal platform, and then while the actual thing starts moving again, so... Anyways, let's head into this final goal in the game, and, well, seemingly to say, that was it, in terms of Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll for the Nintendo DS. And let's talk about my final thoughts of this game. Um, easily to me, though, pretty good, actually. Even though this might actually be the last good uh, Super Monkey Ball game, in my opinion, but it wasn't until likely in Super Monkey Ball Adventure starts to get really, really downhill. Especially noticeable how the fact that Super Monkey Ball currently managed to reach into its dark age. Even for uh, Super Monkey Ball Adventure, as I said earlier, as well as Banana Blitz, which I found that game alright, but not perfect. And also, Step in Roll, I found it pretty mediocre. And 3D is okay, aside from bland level designs as well as bare bones content. But for Banana Splits in general, it does manage to get uh, in a good side of things again, despite with the forms of the controversial platform system they might able to choose it to releasing on, it was on the PlayStation Vita. So, anyway, and then Banana Blitz HD, we'll talk more about that until whenever we decide to do the Sonic playthrough of uh, Banana Blitz HD. So, either way, yeah, let's talk about the overall final, my final thoughts of Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll. It's pretty good, as I said earlier, and then even then, though, the gameplay itself is still looks recognizable from the likes of the Monkey Ball games in the past, and um, also the music itself is actually pretty nice looking to, or pretty nice to listen as well. And also the level layouts is actually pretty recognizable from the past games, in addition with uh, bringing some brand new stages exclusively to this game. And I found the new stages types are actually pretty fascinating. Although there are some uh, nitpickings with this though, and that was the fact that, well, let's get to the another positives. Uh, 
The visuals do look pretty good, even though the uh, the 3D uh, environments do look a bit nicer. And also, while the 2D uh, sprites did manage able to actually get itself this little bit out of place kind of stuff, but it was for the Nintendo DS, obviously. So either way, though. And um, also, uh, the party games that, yes, this game does have party games, does make a return. However, though, there are six of them, just like in the ones in the original Super Monkey Ball game for the Nintendo GameCube, basically. So because of that, though, the only party games they only include is Monkey Race, Monkey Fight, and also Monkey Mini Golf, and also Monkey... Um, I would say Monkey Hockey, and also Monkey Bowling, and finally Monkey Wars. And, uh, it's a shame about the fact that this game doesn't bring back, uh, Monkey Target, which also the same applies to Super Monkey Ball. Um, I would say 3D doesn't have a uh, Monkey Target because, as I said before, it's completely bare bones because it just only contains uh, Monkey Cards and Monkey Fights, which inspires by the two successful franchises, which are Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. But we'll discuss more about the Super Monkey Ball 3D until whenever we get onto that. Uh, the only negative things I can think about this game is the fact that. Um, the controls wise, it's a bit mixed bag. I'm alright with the directional pad, but the stylus can really just kill your wrist. Which I will say, I'd probably not recommend the stylus controls. And uh, for directional pad, it might be okay, but it is actually a bit more far cry to the original two games. Although, again, if you ever play this on the 3DS, it makes the actual circle pad movements feeling a bit better. But still, the far but still is an absolute far cry to the original two games when it comes to the, uh, you know, the most fluid GameCube controllers and stuff like that, excluding uh, the Xbox controller, if you ever played Super Monkey Ball Deluxe and stuff like that. But I think that might have jumped the gum with this one. So because of that though, yeah, you might give this game a shot. It's just, it's kind of a shame that this game never seemed to re-releasing it on the Nintendo Wii U, because I just wish that it usually includes that, along with Sonic Advance Trilogy, as well as Sonic Rush Trilogy, but obviously the Sonic Advance Trilogy already existence in uh, the Japanese Wii U eShop, so... Yeah, that's how it goes, basically. And the credit sequence right there, as you can see, is the fact that, well, basically we have to bust out every single vlog, so... Not much else to say here, so... And in fact, you'll be seeing that every time whenever you complete each and every single world, so... That's why I tend to skip most of them until right now, so either way, though... Yeah, thank you so much for watching of our Let's Play of Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll. I know it's been quite a hectic experience. And next up, in terms of Super Monkey Ball Let's Plays, next up it will be Super Monkey Ball 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. So, sure, it's gonna be something. So this is me, Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm out of here.